Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Hi, welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I am joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. This week, we're joined by Stephen Walling. Hi. That's you. Mm-hmm. So, we have people on the show for a variety of different reasons, but a big part of the reason that we wanted to have you on the show is that you do something that you seem to be very passionate about. You work in the field of Wikipedia. I'm not even sure exactly what it is. You're a Wikipedia editor. Is that, what is it exactly? That Wikipedia editor works, um, Wikipedian. A Wikipedian? Yeah, that, that works too. So... What I want you to do, in case someone's mm-hmm. watching that doesn't know, in the simplest terms possible, explain what a wiki is mm-hmm. and how it works. So a wiki is um, a website that is editable by anyone who visits it, in the most simple terms, I think. Um, there are also additional features that have been added in over the years, but the most basic, most absolute basic one is a website that is editable by anyone web page really that's mm-hmm. editable by anyone um there are some other like really key characteristics like it's very easy to create links in a page mm-hmm. so instead of having to type out the whole url string within your wiki website you could just you know type in the name of the page within your wiki and that creates a link to it okay. um the other one is that you can link to pages that don't exist yet and it doesn't actually give you an error. It just sends you to a thing that says, hey, create this page. So easy, editable, easy linking, linking to things that don't exist yet. And now, nowadays, most wikis have a history of all the edits that happen on a page. And more basic wiki knowledge. Who invented the wiki? That would be hmm, Ward Cunningham, um, who has lived in Portland here for longer than I've been alive. Um, and, and who you get to work with. Yeah, who I get to work with. I have the pleasure of working with mm-hmm. at About Us um, when I'm in there. And he's, uh, in addition to being famous for developing Wiki as a software, um, Ward's very well known in the, you know, field of programming and among developers for a lot of other innovations including like extreme programming and some other things extreme that extreme programming yeah i know it's really called extreme <laughs> programming xp um extreme programming. yeah it's pretty extreme does it have its own channel like extreme sports Those sadly guys. no it i should. would much rather watch the extreme programming yeah. channel than yeah. this extreme sports channel so what but. got you involved as I said, it's something that you seem to be very passionate about because when mm-hmm. you're not working, you also give talks on Wikipedia. And what is it that drew you into it? What was it that made you so interested in the evolution of the wiki? Well, I think I started out in it um, through Wikipedia, um, like a lot of people do, where they start out caring a whole lot more about the content than about the technology themselves. It's just sort of, it's like blogs. So let's step back a second. By content, you mean someone puts up a wiki page Mm -hmm. and you go to it and you say, that's not right. No, no. Stephen Colbert did not invent penguins. He didn't invent penguins. Penguins are a Mm -hmm. creature. Yeah. They're, yeah. So the indignation factor is definitely high. Okay. Yeah. So I started out definitely like most people. And I think most people view it that way where they really care more about what's going on in the wiki, like what it says that that matters to them and that being able to edit the wiki is just sort of an avenue to getting the word about word out about something they care about. Do you remember what the wiki page that did it for you was that like stirred that that you were like, you know, no. I don't actually remember the exact wiki page. Mm-hmm. I remember a few that I sort of like first got into editing, mm-hmm. but I don't remember the one that did that. I'd have to like go back through my edit history and look at my first edit. I think it was something that I don't really think I, that I care about that much. But, but you just knew it was wrong. You're like, oh, yeah, idiots. exactly. Idiots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the first time I read Wikipedia, I didn't actually know it was editable mm-hmm. because um, I'd read content through a printout that a high school teacher of mine had brought into the classroom. So I thought it was just a website or whatever. Um, but, you know, after I got past that sort of initial stage of just caring about the content and wikis just 
um, a medium for me to express myself about some such or other thing, mm-hmm. I really began to um, realize just how like amazing that this technology was to me that um, that it wasn't just something for me to talk about the weird geeky things that I want to talk about, that it's something that sort of empowers other people and allows real communities to form mm-hmm. and people to sort of interact in a way that a lot of other digital mediums don't allow for. So you get passionate about the content and then you get passionate about Wiki itself. Yeah. That's what, when you become like a real wiki geek. What pushes you into then going, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because this is what you're doing. Yeah. This is your livelihood. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So how, how, how did that leap occur? And maybe then more about how other people can get involved in the wiki community. Well, I think the leap is really entirely due to About Us. Mm-hmm. Because... There are very few companies in the world, much less here in Portland, that are that build their business around a wiki. Mm-hmm. There are people who sell wiki software to businesses or schools or whatever it is. And then there are a few people who uh, their business is built around editable websites. And About Us is one of those. So and what does About Us do? About Us is a... At its most basic, it's a website about websites. Okay. So if you have a website like strangelovelive.com, there is a wiki page on About Us describing your website. That's So true. it's basically <laughs> a third-party resource for someone who's not familiar with Strangelove, who wants something other than your, like, your self-description. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a resource for them, and it's also a resource for you guys or whoever owns an organization to talk about themselves and engage with an audience in a new way. Okay. So. And then how do people get more involved in the wiki community without, let's, let's start with that. How do people get more involved in the wiki community? Well, I would say that you probably, whoever you are, you assume that there's not a wiki about the thing that you're really passionate about, but Mm -hmm. The great thing about wikis today is that there's a wiki about everything. So I would encourage people, if they were interested in wikis, to pick the thing that they're really like passionate about, like, say, podcasting or something, mm-hmm. and go find the wiki community that has formed around podcasting or Portland or whatever it is. Lava lamps. Yeah, lava lamps, whatever it is. And that there's going to be people who know how to use a wiki and will introduce you to some of the you know, rougher and finer points of wiki culture Mm -hmm. in a way that you're probably going to have a little bit more context with since you already maybe know the subject. Okay. And then once you start to get involved, there are some rules to the wiki community. There are some guidelines that people should follow. What are they? Well, I mean, individual websites have rules, but I would say, and I think... Just the broad wiki Yeah, I, I think it would be more like uh, wiki... The wiki community feels more like their values mm-hmm. to working okay, with. Okay, there you go. Yeah. What are no, the I know values? that sounds really crazy, but no, it really no. does, like... It, yeah. Um, I would say that the first um, value to the wiki community, the one that you kind of have to... Um, accept or um, try before you are able to do anything else is the value of being bold, Mm -hmm. which means that if you go to the page and you see something that's sort of not right or maybe isn't quite perfect yet or whatever, don't be afraid to dive in and make mistakes and experiment. Mm -hmm. That's usually the biggest hurdle most people have with wikis is being bold. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's because they don't know that the secret of wikis, the like secret sauce that makes them work, is that it's actually easier to undo a mistake than it is to make it. So it's not really a big deal if you screw up. Okay. So be bold is probably the first value. Um, the second value, I would say, once you've edited a page or used a wiki and you have run into other people, is assuming good faith, which is to say that you, when you gift your words to a wiki or your images or whatever it is, you assume that the other people there who you're interacting with are there because they also care about the content and they also care about making the wiki as good as it can be Mm -hmm. and that you should assume that they're there acting in good faith. Because 
uh, running around the wikis and doing the things that you, whatever it is that you care about, um, and assuming that everyone who's there is out to totally screw things up and you know waste your time and I'll be have a terrible. Question about that for later, but yeah, yeah. So we assume assuming good those, faith. Assu- yeah, assuming those things um, is both kind of a waste of your time and it's not really super productive. So we. Ask so people that's kind of the do unto others rule. It's kind of like the do unto others rule, but it's it's a, it's also a little bit of a leap of faith. I mean, yeah. the word is accurate, but um, I think the fact that there are plenty of wikis out there that aren't total garbage 100 percent of the time is a reason enough to assume that the other people using the site are there because they care about content too. Okay. So that's probably the other one. Um, I think another one, and this is related to assume good faith and be bold, is that change is cheap, which is like, you know, it's easy to undo changes. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make new ones. The beauty of wikis is that you build on content or take things away continuously. And you can see the history of what's been added and taken away. There's a technical feature to see what's been added or taken away. So it's not really a big deal to change things all the time. Like permanency is not really a wiki value. So change is cheap is probably and i would say i'm probably forgetting something really important because i don't remember anything i just google it um that change is cheap assume good faith and be bold are probably three of the most important wiki values and then if you've sort of got a handle on those or like willing to like give them a try in a way that you've probably got all that you need to using a wiki so I want to look at the wiki as a reference material then, especially with the assume good faith. Mm-hmm. How do you use that? Say, you know, uh, when you're writing an article, if you're mm-hmm. in school, you're writing a report, um, no matter what you're doing, you're trying to find actual factual content. Mm-hmm. And you talked a little bit about this at a uh, digital journalism camp, yeah. using wiki as a reference and using it to prove a point. Yeah. How well, does that work? I would say that assume good faith only applies to editing a wiki and participating in a wiki community. It has absolutely nothing to do with accepting the accuracy of the content from the get-go or like not being a skeptic mm-hmm. when it comes to factual accuracy. Those are two totally different things. So writing assume good faith, reading and assessing the information. Yeah, you should just be just as skeptical it. as any other source, if not more so. Okay. So, yeah. That's pro- that's definitely it. Yeah. So uh, my first, because I am always late to pick up on everything, I remember I remember knowing the existence of the wiki, but then I mm-hmm. remember something, I mentioned Stephen Colbert earlier, mm-hmm. and I, it never even occurred to me that someone would mess with the wiki intentionally Yeah. until I was watching Stephen Colbert and all of his little Stephen Colbert minions then went off to mess with wiki pages yeah. and, you know, skew bridge naming things and yeah and how is it dealt with when there is an obvious lemming like Mm -hmm. convergence upon a wiki page well the i think the other thing most people don't know about wikis is that they hear the word crowdsourcing or they think about like anyone can edit as an idea and they think that it's just random Mm drive-bys in terms of edits and that's not really usually how it works Usually how it works is that there's a group of people who are really committed to the content. It's sort of like an 80-20 rule. Like 80% of the people that show up probably aren't even going to make an edit, much less do anything. And then there's 20% of people who will edit. And then probably an even smaller amount of those are the ones who are really going to like stick around and check the history and, you know get really into a page so there's so there's always yeah so when stephen colbert goes on tv and says let's all let's all say that elephants aren't endangered that there's plenty of them we could just whatever it's Mm -hmm. cool that not only are people watching a show but there are people watching a show who are really into this wiki thing and they're totally all over it and that they know what's coming Mm -hmm. like it's not a surprise Mm mm-hmm um, especially when he announces it on a hilarious national television show that gazillions of people watch. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a technical... Technical, small yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. But... Technical you know, detail. Yeah. Assume good faith doesn't mean that we're going to like ignore the obvious fact of when something like that's going to happen, or that there are going to be people who are amused by you know, messing with pages. So is there like a gatekeeper in the wiki community? There's. I wouldn't say there's a gatekeeper. I would say that... Um, 
one of the beauties of almost like 99% of wikis is that it's a publish and then filter medium. Mm -hmm. So there, if it's that anyone can edit and there's publishing happening all the time, there's also always a community of people who are sticking around and filtering after that publishing has happened and maybe undoing changes, maybe adding to them, maybe doing whatever, you know? So does that, does that answer the question? Sort of. of? Kind of. So yeah. for... I'm sorry, I leaned into your shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Bad host. <laughs> so for every 10,000 people saying, you know, no, elephants aren't endangered, and yes, pigs can fly. Yeah. There's... there's. It would probably only... I mean, depending on who they are and how much time they have on their hands, if there's 10,000 people intent on saying elephants aren't endangered, all it might take <laughs> is maybe like 10 or 20 to like you know Set undo those changes back. yeah exactly yeah okay so uh in a time in history where we've literally gone from encyclopedias mm -hmm. like door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesmen and like these huge rows of books a to z information about stuff mm -hmm. and then you can condense all that knowledge into something that you can get off of your computer yeah. in wiki form which is going to be if you're you know assuming the good faith mm -hmm. much more up-to-date and accurate than any published text you can find mm -hmm. how do we kind of balance those two things together like the old the old world traditional published text with what you can find now well i think it it depends on what you're talking about if you're talking about something that there are no published there's i, I guess the easier way to say it is there's two kinds of wikis mm -hmm. there's wikis for which there's already published information about in books and newspapers and print magazines and those things. Mm -hmm. And there's information that up till now, up till the history of online publishing and wikis, wouldn't have made the editorial cut ever. Mm -hmm. So there's, I would say that it bifurcates into two, those two categories. For the one where there's already published Britannica, encyclopedia, and newspaper information about, mm -hmm. most wiki content is uh, most of the communities rely on those sources to verify what they're saying. So okay. in no way does the fact that Wikipedia exists mean that we don't want to publish books anymore or that we don't we don't rely <laughs> on them. Yeah, books that we don't bad. we don't rely on them or that we don't think that expert single authors are valuable. Mm -hmm. It just means that you know, here's an easier way for us to do things that are suited to a wiki, like condensing and aggregating a whole bunch of book sources together to make a simple introduction or to stay up to date really, really fast, which a book couldn't necessarily do in a publishing cycle. No, it could not. Yeah. So there's there's ways to play to the advantages of wikis without really hurting or, you know, replacing the value of book publishing. And I think that's the other thing, especially when it comes to Wikipedia. These are these are people who write an encyclopedia for a hobby. Like uh -huh. they're not they're not people who don't like books. Yeah. So that's one fact. Um, and then of course there's the other side, which not as many people I think think about, but that Wikipedians and a lot of Wiki people are really passionate about, which is that because it's so cheap to publish to a wiki online mm -hmm. instead of printing a set of encyclopedias we can create content for people that have never ever had the most basic printed content that we've had before. Like there's never been an encyclopedia in Zulu or Egyptian Arabic, or well, there may have been one in Egyptian Arabic, but um, you know, thousands of languages. In fact, yeah. the languages that are most spoken by people on earth, like with the most number of speakers, mm -hmm. those are the ones that have never had an encyclopedia and that I think many wiki people are super passionate about creating content for so when you get past the whole we're not trying to you know kill publishing we're not trying to kill yeah. the authors and you move on to the the fact that it's really an entity of its and it is an entity i mean yeah. it is a growing ever-changing i mean we're not organism going, yeah it's an organism i don't want to say it's a being but yeah it is an <laughs> organism when you kind of move past all of that sorry <laughs> The lights got really bright for a second. What is it going to become? That, that's a good question. I think the answer is no one really knows. Yeah. Um, on the one hand, it's kind of crazy because it's the largest single 
body of knowledge ever compiled in the history of the universe, so far as we know. Which is scary. Which is scary. And awesome. Yeah, which is, I mean, on the one hand, it's both, you know, in a way kind of logical and in another way kind of scary that it's just a whole bunch of people who just, you know, have some spare time on their hands. Um, but I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody really knows where it's going. I think right now, a lot of wiki people and Wikipedians are interested in making sure that the community that's building this body of knowledge is sustainable and has like a short term future, Mm -hmm. um, in the next five or 10 years, much less the next 20, 25 years. When did Ward create the wiki? Wow, I knew you were going to ask me that. And, I, <laughs> and you still don't know. I, I don't. Estimate for me. Do you have like a... Well, it was definitely in the 90s. It was very early web technology. I almost want to say... It's so crazy that I don't know this. The exact date. Is this like when you're... It like, may have been like you about... You have the 90... bad dream about you're taking the test and you're naked. No, yeah. Guess. It's like... <laughs> it's between <laughs> no, no. 91 and 97. I want to say 93. Okay. But I'm sure someone in the chat room is going to look it up and, you know. School us. Yeah, exactly. That. 1995. 1995. Well, That's the year I moved it, to Portland. Yeah, I knew it was between 90. Okay. According right. to the uh, <laughs> wiki, okay, which yeah. we're showing Oh, look, right and now. there's a picture of Ward. Mm-hmm. I think. And there's a Actually, it needs a new picture of Ward. Because yeah, it does need an update. He has been riding his bike like a madman, and he's, he's in better shape than I am. And out yeah he's yes. he's in good shape so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just brown nosing <laughs> uh, on the wiki page <laughs> so uh the wiki is celebrating a seat so the ma- 14 years is it my math good there am i right wait what year is it what year is it it's 2009, 2009. it's 14 years yeah okay I just wanted to watch you squirm I had a, a moment bit. of, like, why are you staring at me? I know my math is good. I know it's 14 years. No, I'm right. I'm right. I can do the math. It's mm-hmm. not that late at I'm night. a writer. I can't do simple arithmetic. So. I can do very simple arithmetic. Very mm-hmm. simple. 14 years was enough to make me go, wait, mm-hmm. no, it might. Uh-uh. So in 14 years, it's gone from something that one man created mm-hmm. i'm gonna say in his basement because it sounds good and we have basements in portland but yeah probably not in his it's basement it's possible it was in his basement though i don't really let's, think so let's just let's just let's just go with that because yeah. you know i like to think of good things being created in the basement yeah. it's gone from something that one man created in his basement, mm-hmm. in basement. <laughs> um to something that people around the world are mm-hmm. passionate about and yeah. so passionate that there's a word wikipedians what defines a Wikipedian? Well, I would say that the not so great answer right now is that the majority of Wikipedians are young white guys. <laughs> uh, now that's the simple truth. The, the nice thing is that we're aware of that and mm-hmm. we would like to have a more diverse community. But it's mostly geeks. Mm-hmm. It's mostly people who are, you know into spending time on the internet, into writing an encyclopedia as a hobby, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But on the other hand, it's also surprisingly diverse. Like, I'm not writing articles about things that I don't really care about, and that there are people who really care about things that I know nothing about Mm -hmm. whatsoever. So in some ways, it's pretty diverse. There are people who only write about a very small subset of stuff that you might not think would be the kind of people who would write an encyclopedia. But it's their knowledge base. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, in other words, it depends on what the subject is. Okay. So, one other thing, what a wiki is not. We discussed earlier before mm-hmm. the cameras rolled that Gullible is not a... <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. That there are a lot of things that don't really work for a wiki page. And one of the things that you said, wikis are not, it's not a dictionary. So it's not going to have a definition of just a simple word. Well, that's actually peculiar to Wikipedia. There's actually a sister project called Wiktionary, which is a wiki dictionary. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, a wiki's just a web page that you can edit. It, it could have anything in it. I mean, it could be, um, you know, a long discussion forum. In fact, Ward's wiki, the original wiki, was really, it was a complete mix of discussion and, like, you know, content for readers who aren't editing. And it was a total jumble of those two things together. And Wikipedia was actually the first wiki to really separate out 
meta discussion about the subject and information about the subject. Okay. Um, and I forget where I was going with this, but what did I ask you? <laughs> oh, what it's not. Oh, what it's not. Oh, so there's a whole huge screed list of things that Wikipedia says it's not. I would say that, um, the one absolutely positive thing that's true about all wikis is that, and that it's funny that you'd have to say this, but wiki isn't paper. And there are many times that people try and put the limitations of paper and print publishing Mm -hmm. um, that they assume are natural truths about the way information works. They try and apply that to wiki as if it were qualities of information instead of qualities of the medium that it was published on. Which is a long way of saying that we don't... Unless you run out, literally run out of server space, you don't run out of space on a wiki. There's Technically speaking, there's no reason that something couldn't be in Wikipedia for purely technical, physical reasons, like in a book. Yeah. You know, Britannica has the kind of editorial structure it does because it has a limited, finite physical resource that it has to put all this information in. Yeah. So it has a financial reason for saying this goes in and that doesn't in addition to their personal feelings about you know the sanctity of knowledge and all that crap <laughs> <laughs> the sanctity of knowledge i don't which believe doesn't in apply that to yeah no no it, yeah it definitely does i mean in some ways each wiki applies its own sort of arbitrary editorial standards but the fact that wiki doesn't have physical limitations in the way that paper or any other medium that people have published on in the past is probably a signature quality are there any moral implications to the Wikipedia, to wikis? I mean, do you... Oof. Oh. Because that's I mean, the one that it, I... I mean, It depends on who you ask. If you ask someone who's kind of like um, really super heavily invested in traditional publishing and like uh, the usual way of things, I guess, would be the nice way to put it, then the a lot... The traditional. Yeah. Um, a lot of them feel like it fundamentally does change the way people view factual accuracy and trusting resources and authorship and, you know, rewarding people for their hard work and their intellectual property and a lot of other things like that. Well, people are choosing to put their intellectual property on there, though. So, yeah, that kind of. Um, I understand the devaluing of authors, but when you choose to give well, your information, I think it's the a primary different. way that they're thinking about is indirect. They're saying everyone's reading Wikipedia, so they're not paying for Britannica, which doesn't uh, pay for expert knowledge. I didn't which, pay for which, encyclopedias when I was a kid either. Yeah. I just read them at the library. Which I mean, they're ultimately <laughs> being altruistic about it. They're saying that that's bad because expert knowledge is better than community created knowledge from possibly non experts. So they're they're thinking they're thinking about what they think is the right thing for knowledge and factual accuracy. But right. Before we move on to After Hours and some uh, audience questions. Wow, did we really already go through the tech edition? Well, yeah. I just want to know a few of the wiki pages that you're passionate about or a few of the wiki pages that entertain you. Uh, well, wiki pages that entertain me, I would have to say just about any art. There's actually, we keep a list of the unusual articles. Okay. It's Wikipedia unusual articles. And I have, this sounds, makes me sound like a huge dork, but I have Yay. laughed. I have laughed so hard at some of the crazy articles in there. Like um, a town in Austria called the, like it's, well, this is tech edition still, so maybe I shouldn't say that. But it's it's named after the F bomb. Um, <laughs> his could name say is it's, Austria. It's Fook. Yeah, we'll just pronounce yeah, it that, that way instead. Yeah. Well, Ing is actually Fook Ing. Yeah, okay. that Fook one. Ing. Yeah. Um, and they actually had to like. There's a whole little like subsection in the article about how they had to like cement in all of the signs everywhere around town because people <laughs> were constantly stealing them. Um, so that and all kinds of other crazy articles really amuse me. Um, I'm really passionate about, um, obviously, Oregon content means a lot to me. And mm-hmm. the fact that we have a really strong community here in Oregon who's well organized and it does a really good job of sort of shepherding Oregon-related content makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, though I'm definitely not the only one or first and foremost among those people. Um, and I think the other beauty of Wiki that... 
um, I tend to appreciate, and so do a lot of other Wikipedians, is that we write about stuff that is completely unrelated to our like normal lives. Like I sp have spent a lot of time writing about like sustainable agriculture stuff, mm -hmm. and I grew up in the city. Do you have and I yeah, I have chickens, but <laughs> I've I've never lived on a farm or like been a farmer or like actually like done any of that. So it's sort of odd that I write about something like that, but whether it's that or whether it's you know higher mathematics or whatever it is, part of the joy of wikis and writing about them as sort of a non-expert in community created content mm -hmm. is that. It in order to write about it in any way that's, you know, makes us feel good about what we're writing, we have to learn about what we're writing. So it's an opportunity for, like, me to grow intellectually and personally to provide that content to someone else. It's a, it's a way to keep the stagnation away. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, what? Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Mm, thank you. We'll be back in just a few minutes with After Hours. We've got a bunch more Wikipedia stuff to talk about and questions and hair and martinis. It'd be nice. Thank you, everybody.